Right, we're going to start off by doing areas enclosed by polar curves. We're just doing a single polar curve, and we're going to try and find the area that we have here. So it wants us to find the area enclosed by this cardioid with the equation r equals a brackets 1 plus cos theta. So a is just a constant. It's going to be hanging out for the whole time. The area is going to be in terms of a, which makes sense for that, right? Now, I want to find the area of the whole thing. So I'm going to say there's going to be this part of the area. And you always think about it as coming out as like rays of light from the pole. So if I kept doing all of this area that I've got, that would find out what half of it is. And you could just times it by two. Okay? So when you look at these lines that I've drawn in here, what is the angle of this first line that I drew down here? Zero. That angle is zero. What was the last line that you think I drew? 180 degrees, pi. Now, sometimes people think like, oh, it's this bit over here, but actually it's going to go, these lines are going to get smaller and smaller and smaller so that beta is actually going to be equal to pi. So I'm going to be integrating it between alpha and beta. Think about it, all of those rays of light. Even though it doesn't look like it's going all the way around to beta, we know that it gets back to the origin at beta, so we need uh, uh, pi. So we need to make sure we're doing it all the way between zero and pi, and we're going to double the area. So we think that the total area enclosed, which is going to be the top half and the bottom half of this cardioid, this heart shape, we know that the area is going to be two lots of the area between uh, zero and pi. But this section that we've got here comes, this is where the area of the sector comes in, which is a half r squared d theta. So it's going to be a half r squared, which is going to be a 1 plus cos theta squared d theta. This is a half r squared d theta. So the nice thing that was smart about the way we split this into the two shapes is the two and the half cancel, which is great. So we're just going to be trying to integrate between 0 and pi a squared 1 plus cos theta squared d theta. And I'm going to do two things. One of them is expanding the brackets. What else do you think I might do that would be useful or sensible thing? take out a squared, because this a squared is a number. It's not going to affect anything to do with it. So I'm just, I'm just going to put the a squared at the front. I don't need to do a half with it. I'm just factorizing it out to the front of the summation. So I'm going to have between 0 and pi, and then I'm going to have 1 plus 2 cos theta plus cos squared theta d theta. cos squared theta is a half plus a half cos 2 theta. If you wanted to, you could also factorize out a half if that was something that you wanted to do to have less fractions going on inside the middle. For this one, I think it's quite simple. I'm not that bothered by having a half going throughout the thing. So I'm probably going to just leave it in there. Or sh should we take it out? I don't know. I don't mind. Would you take it out or not? Doesn't really. OK, well, let's leave it in for this one. In some of the future ones, we'll take it out. So I'm going to just jump a stage. 1 plus a half is obviously 3 over 2. So I'm now actually going to do the integration. And I'm going to have 3 over 2 theta. And I'm going to integrate 2 cos theta, which is just 2 sine theta. And this last part will be plus a quarter sine 2 theta. No plus c required anymore. And it's going between 0 and pi. What do we know about when you sub 0, pi, and 2 pi into sine? Zero. They're all 0. Okay. So whenever I'm putting 0 in here and here, or pi in here and here, they're all going to be 0. So that you end up with a squared equals, sorry, not a squared equals, the area is equal to 3 over 2 pi plus 0 plus 0 minus 0 minus 0 minus 0. So that's it with the limits done. So it's 3 over 2 pi a squared. 
which is really cool, right? This is amazing that this shape that we've got here, let's just pretend that A is one. The area of this shape is three over two pi. It's just a pretty, it's just nice to think that you can get exact areas for these things. And I think it kind of makes sense that there is an A squared in here when there's an A in the original bit. Geometrically, why do you think that there's an A squared in the area, but there's an A in the formula? What do you think that A is doing to one plus cos theta? What happens if I changed it from, I don't know, one to three? What would happen to this, this graph? It'd scale it by a factor of A. So the area should scale by a factor of A squared because it's the scale factor relationships that we have that we've got between them, okay? Now you could obviously check this with your calculators. You wouldn't be able to type in uh, this line here. You wouldn't be able to type in the A squared bit, but you can integrate between naught and pi, one plus cos x all squared, and you should get three over two pi. And then you know that the A is gonna be an A squared in it as well. So you should be in the habit of using your graphics calculator to check that the integration gives you the correct value, particularly for this topic where there are so many places where you can do substitution errors and things just don't necessarily work in the right way. I'm not gonna check it for this one, but if we're gonna do it for some of the future ones, we can check them. Everyone got written down what they need written down? Yeah. Mabel, done? Yeah? Okay, so we're now gonna find the area of one loop of the polar rows R equals A sine four theta. So I've got a polar rose here. I've done it as not a sine four theta. I've just done it as sine four theta on my diagram because you can see it goes to one here. Obviously, it would be going up to a if it was a sine four theta. I just couldn't be bothered to change my graph. And so we want to find the area of one loop of this polar rose. Now, we've got the diagram. If we didn't have the diagram, we would need to try and establish one loop of it. You can see from our diagram that the loop is in contained between which angles, do you think? Yeah, it's between zero and pi over four, which is here. And if you imagine this coming out as like rays of sunshine again, it's gonna be all of them between zero and pi over four. But remember, if you didn't have this diagram, you would establish that by saying that we want the first loop, which is when four theta is positive, sorry, not when four theta is positive, when sine of four theta is positive. And when is sine of four theta positive? When four theta is between zero and pi. So theta would be between zero and pi over four. So that's why it is between zero and pi over four, one of the loops. If it goes above pi over four, just a little bit above, it goes to negative, and we don't include negative in edXL, okay? So what I'm actually going to be doing here is the area is going to be equal to a half r squared, which is going to be a squared sine squared four theta d theta between zero and pi over four. So I'm definitely gonna take the a squared out to the front so I'm going to have a half a squared between 0 and pi over 4. Sine squared 4 theta is a half minus a half cos 8 theta d theta. This time I am going to pull the half out to the front, okay? Just to try and make it look a little bit neater. I'm going to have now a quarter a squared naught pi over four, one minus cos eight theta, d theta. So a quarter a squared, let's go in with the integration, it's just gonna be theta minus an eighth sine eight theta between zero and pi over four. Do you notice how I never type limits in my calculator, I do everything one bit at a time. Someone in the class a couple of days ago was trying to type all of this kind of expression into a calculator and it wasn't giving him an exact value. So you have to do this manually. You can't type this whole thing into a calculator. So let's just think really sensibly about a couple of bits here. When I'm doing the sine of eight theta, when I put zero into eight theta, I get zero. When I put pi over four in here, I would get two pi. And sine of two pi, 
is zero. So luckily I don't need to worry about any of the trig bits. Both of the trig bits are gonna be equal to zero. So I'm gonna get a quarter a squared theta, which is pi over four, minus zero. And then I'm gonna be minusing zero minus zero. I've kind of written this in a bit more detail than I did before. So all of those zero-y bits are gonna just give us pi over 16 a squared. So that's one loop of the polar rows. If we wanted to find out what the total area enclosed would be, what would we multiply it by? We'd multiply it by four because we're only talking about the red petals. If it was not at XL, you'd multiply it by eight for all of the petals that there are. Would they say between minus pi and pi? Um, yes, they would say between minus pi and pi. They'll make it clear in the question like for what it is. Because at this one, it's gonna start repeating itself. We're gonna be eventually doing ones where they're like spiraling out and they're like overlapping each other, which is when it gets really, really weird. Yeah? So, so um, the four of the loops are for when it's greater than zero? The four red loops are when r is greater than zero. The four dotted loops are when r is less than zero that will not be included in the way that we consider them in edXL. But in other areas of maths, you may still consider those, but just at the moment, we wouldn't consider them. I guess this is something I'm not 100% sure on my answer. If you were trying to work out the area and you just integrated it between zero and two pi or minus pi and pi, what do you think you might get if you in integrated it between zero and two pi? Zero. I think you might get zero because yeah. I think the negative petals will have a negative area. A bit like when you do integrating curves and they go be below the x-axis, you get a negative area. I imagine, and I would wanna check this, this I should think would be considered as a negative area. So I think if we did it between zero and two pi, I think it probably would cancel, but maybe it wouldn't. So this first one, this first one we could have done in one go between zero and two pi, uh, because there wouldn't be any, there's no, definitely no negative kind of areas. This one we have to be careful of. I mean, let's just think, if we did it between zero and two pi, it would be this whole thing that we've got here. Let's actually just see what happens. So we've got theta minus an eight sine eight theta between two pi and zero. So you're still gonna have your quarter a squared and you're gonna have your two pi here. And then this is still gonna be zero. Everything else is gonna be zero. So you get uh, a squared, half a squared which is the eight loops. So I don't know, maybe my idea is wrong. Maybe, they, maybe the areas are positive. I'm not sure. Anyway, that's just a, that's, a, that's not, I don't like that I don't have the answer for that. But we're only considering the positive bits, so we don't need to worry about the negative bits, okay? But interesting. Okay, so we're gonna just do one more and then we're gonna do questions one to four and then we'll do the other bits next time I see you, okay? Where we're a bit trickier kind of ones. So it's just got now a sketch of this curve. What is it, um, a dimple or an egg? Yeah. It's an egg, I think it's an egg. One and three, P is less than two Q. So it's an egg. I don't know, I need to check that page. <laughs> what is it if P is less than two? It looks like an egg, but I'm just worried there might be a little dimple. Yeah, it looks like there's a bit of egg. A dimple is when it's between Q and... It's when it's between Q and two Q. Yeah. So it's not bigger than three. So it's not between three and six, it's one. This bit here is a, is a one. So it's, it's an egg, it's not a dimple. So we're just gonna find the area of this curve. Um, and they wanna show that it's 107 over two pi. Oh, sorry, no, they, find us, they want us to find the value of A. So we are going to do that the area is equal to, now you could do a half R squared between zero and two pi, but the way we're probably gonna do it is do it between uh, zero and pi and double it. So we're gonna do two lots of a half r squared d theta between zero and pi. You could just do between zero and two pi, but then you just get this bit that just kind of like simplifies the way it cancels out a bit. You could do it between zero and two pi. The reason I just want us to try and get in the habit of spotting uh, the symmetry of these, because the more symmetry we can spot it often will make things better. So it's going to be the integral from naught to pi of a squared plus 
6a cos theta plus 9 cos squared theta d theta. It's going to be a squared plus 6a cos theta plus 9 cos squared theta is going to be 9 over 2 plus 9 over 2 cos 2 theta d theta. Can't really pull anything out here, so I'm just going to do an integration. What does a squared integrate to? Good. I was worried someone was going to say a third a cubed. You could, but then, but there's you could then you'd have a squared theta plus nine over two theta factorized, but it's it's not going to make a difference. So we're going to have a squared theta plus. Uh, I'm going to do the nine over two theta right next door to it. What does six a cos theta integrate to? 6a sine theta, and then the last bit, 9 over 4 sine 2 theta, and this is going to be between 0 and pi. Luckily, sine theta, it seems we're only subbing into sine theta, they're both going to be 0 for both of them, so we end up with a squared pi plus 9 over 2 pi plus 0 plus 0, Minus zero, minus zero, minus zero, minus zero. So now we know that a squared pi plus nine over two pi is equal to 107 over two pi. Factorize out pi, cancel the pi, subtract the nine over two. So we get 98 over 2 equals a squared. And 98 over 2 is 49. I don't know why I was writing it like that. And so a is equal to 7. And so what you could do on your calculator when you're in the exam to know that you've 100% got the answer is you could just type 7 plus 3 cos theta squared between 0 and pi. And do you get the answer 107 over 2 pi on your calculator? If you do, full marks on the question, move on and know that you've got all of that done. Okay? Yep. So the marks are going to be lots of things like knowing this. There's often like a mark for like knowing that, so just make sure you know it. So that's, we're just going to do questions 1 to 4 from exercise 5C because the remaining questions start doing things a bit more like... Yes, I want to see all those steps. The remaining questions in exercise 5C start getting a bit like weirder and like overlapping areas and stuff like that. So we're just going to keep it really simple for this last bit. That's when you start combining them. And I'll just quickly show you. It's when you start having things where you're going to find like the area between two curves, which is a bit weird. And then you're going to do things that look like, uh, where have I gone? Like this, <laughs> these, this. Like they just start getting a bit weird, OK? Anyway, questions one to four, five C.